So in this very quick example, we're going to look at how to simplify a complex fraction. We call this a complex fraction because it's one gigantic fraction, but its numerator and its denominator are each themselves fractions. So anytime we have a fraction within a fraction, we call it a complex fraction. So how in the world are we going to simplify this intimidating looking thing? Well, the strategy is very simple. Every complex fraction, because it's a fraction, is nothing more than a division problem. So don't be fooled. A complex fraction is nothing more than a division problem. So that big fraction bar that you see there, we can think of that big fraction bar as a division sign. If we do that, then it just becomes a problem of dividing one fraction by another fraction, or in this example, one rational expression by another rational expression. And so I'm going to call this step zero. We're going to rewrite this complex fraction as a division problem instead. Once we do that, we have a fraction division problem to do. And we know how to divide fractions. Replace the divisor by its reciprocal and trade out multiplication for division. Then that makes it a fraction multiplication problem. And we know how to do a fraction multiplication problem. The first step there is to multiply straight across the numerators and straight across the denominators without worrying about factoring or canceling because that's the step that we do next. We want to simplify that rational expression that we get, simplify the quotient, which we can do by now, factoring everything in sight. Factor the numerator completely, factor the denominator completely, whatever you need to do to make that happen. Then we can see if there are factors that the numerator and denominator have in common, cancel them, and then multiply back out all the factors that survive that process and simplify. It looks like a lot, but really it's just another fraction division problem. So let's get started on this complex fraction whose numerator is 15x cubed over 10 plus 2x and whose denominator is 3x to the fifth over 25 minus x squared. How are we going to do it? Well, let's trade out that gigantic fraction bar for a division sign. Putting the numerator as the dividend and the denominator as the divisor. So this is really nothing more than the division problem, 15x cubed over 10 plus 2x divided by 3x to the fifth over 25 minus x squared. So now, how do we divide these rational expressions? Every division problem is a multiplication problem in disguise. Replace the divisor by its reciprocal and change division for multiplication. Flip and multiply is the shorthand for that. So when I flip that second fraction, it becomes 25 minus x squared over 3x to the fifth and we trade division for multiplication. So now we're multiplying these two rational expressions and we know how to do that. We just multiply directly across the numerators. So our new numerator is 15x cubed times 25 minus x squared. Our new denominator is 10 plus 2x times 3x to the fifth. Great, now we have a single rational expression that it's our job to simplify. And we simplify it by factoring everything because we need to know what to cancel. Anytime I have a leaning coefficient that's negative, I like to rewrite it um, by factoring out a negative sign. So instead of thinking of this as 25 minus x squared, I'm going to trade places with those two terms, and in doing so, factor out a, a factor of negative 1. So that negative is going to uh, go out into the front of my expression. Also, my 10 plus 2x downstairs, I'm going to rewrite that so that the 2x comes first. Because that's addition of two positive coefficients, I don't need to factor out any negative signs or anything. We'll just make that 2x plus 10. This just makes it a little easier to look at when we now do the step of factoring everything in sight. 15x cubed is 3 times 5 times 3 factors of x. x squared minus 25 is a difference of two perfect squares. Because 25 is a perfect square of the number 5, this difference of squares factors into x plus 5 times x minus 5. Now what about 2x plus 10? Well, it's got a greatest common factor between those two terms of 2. So we can bring out that 2 and be left with a cofactor of x plus 5. Then 3x to the fifth is 3 times 5 factors of x. So we factored everything in sight completely, which permits us to identify which factors upstairs and downstairs are common. I've got a pair of 3s I can get rid of. I've got 3 factors of x upstairs and downstairs that I can get rid of. And I also have an x plus 5 I can get rid of. So the only things that survive upstairs are a minus sign, a 5, and an x minus 5. Downstairs, a 2 and 2 factors of x. We've done all the canceling we can do. So now we're just going to multiply back out and simplify. Negative 5 times the quantity x minus 5 gives me minus 5x plus 25. And downstairs, 2 times x times x, 2x squared. And there's our final answer. 
So don't be too intimidated by complex fractions. Every complex fraction is just a division problem. Take the gigantic fraction bar and replace it with a division sign, where the old numerator is now your uh, dividend and the old denominator is now your divisor. Once it becomes a division problem between two rational expressions, we know what to do with it. Treat it like a division problem by replacing it with a multiplication problem. Take the reciprocal of the second fraction and replace division by multiplication. Then we know how to multiply fractions, straight across the numerator, straight across the denominator. Factor everything in sight so that you know what you can cancel. Do as much canceling as you can, and then multiply everything that survives back out to get your final answer.